Today, we're going to have a closer look of the Rolex Datejust 41. It is the two-tone with the slate Wimbledon dial that is becoming more and more popular. Let's have a closer look. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So obviously we're sitting here with a beautiful Rolex. And before we go started, let me introduce myself. I'm Karar and this is Alex. Lovely. So we have the 41 day just with the Wimbledon dial. It is a very beautiful and striking watch, Alex. Let's start off. Yes. How do you like the watch? I mean, for a day chest, I'm I've been a day chest fan for a long time. Mm -hmm. I prefer the 36 millimeter versions, but since the introduction of the 41, I have to say they have a, a great combination between a sports watch mm -hmm. and a dress watch. Yeah, exactly. Day chest were usually seen as uh, the 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 dress watch from uh, from Rolex, but lately with the upgraded. Um, or downgraded depends on how you like it but with the new case and uh, when they changed it from Datejust 2 to Datejust 41 slim down the profile a little bit slim down the case I think this one is a little bit more all around yeah I agree yes yeah, as, as you mentioned the uh, Datejust 2 that was the predecessor of the Datejust 41 mm -hmm. uh, was in production for a couple of years and it was quite bulky, quite thick, yeah. not so day-chusty in its, uh, how to say, presence on the wrist and overall aesthetics. And the Daychust 41 that we have with us today was introduced back in 2016. And as you said, they slimmed down the case, they made the proportions look a lot better than, personally for my taste at least, than the Daychust 2. And What's interesting about the Wimbledon dial that we yeah. are looking at here is that it's not been so popular amongst people that buys the Datejust. Yeah. And uh, it is actually a leftover from the Datejust 2. Yeah. Uh, and now in the Datejust 41, it's become a, a real hit and they are really popular and uh, yeah. Yeah, they've become extremely popular. The, the Wimbledon dials are now produced in their steel and white gold series in the steel and rose gold series and the steel and the yellow gold as we see here. Exactly. Also, you have them on Oyster, you have them on Jubilee in both two tones in rose and yellow and also in full steel which is well gives you all the options that you need out there yeah, yeah. and personally i actually really like the one on the oyster it's a bit more sporty yeah yeah the uh, jubilee has always been a bit more of the elegant bracelet type that rolex produced more dressy more so dressy yeah uh, but yeah i mean some people say that you can't really have a fluted bezel day chest and the oyster bracelet because it's a disconnect and uh, i'm personally one of those guys i prefer like a smooth bezel with the oyster uh -huh. for an even more sporty look but i mean when you look at it you can't really complain and say it's ugly per se yeah no i agree with you and uh, obviously this one on the jubilee i'd say is slightly better looking mm -hmm. but in person i actually really like this one uh, on the oyster because um yeah i mean the oyster on two-tone with uh, with the extra flair on the um, on the bezel with the fluted bezel uh, it really gives off an elegant and sporty look and gives it still has that shine yeah. um that resembles a true rolex so to say and that's a good thing that they did actually when they introduced the Datejust 41, that they brought back the Jubilee, since on the Datejust 2 there wasn't an option to have the Jubilee at, at all, so it only came like this more or less. Uh, so that was very well received within the Rolex community and amongst watch enthusiasts that they brought back the 41mm, sorry, the Jubilee to the 41mm Datejust. Yeah. And and also something very interesting is happening in the landscape with the Datejust 41 overall. Um, 
the Datejust model, if you look back two, three years, it was a model that was always on the shelves. Yeah. And um, when the steel hype came around and um, people started to looking at Datejust because that was what was available. Mm -hmm. And nowadays you're looking at the Datejust and some of the dials, some of the models, especially when you look at full steel with the yellow gold, um, you have the blue dial stick is extremely hard to get your hands on. The Wimbledon is extremely mm. hard to get your hands on through, through your AD. Its popularity has really gone up lately. And that, that is really interesting to see. And when you look at the Wimbledon die per se, it is trading with the steel version. It is trading above retail. Mm. That's a date just trading above retail. I'd never thought I'd say that. <laughs> All right, but let's break down the dial a bit more because what we are looking at here is a slate gray dial. Yeah. Yes. With the sunburst effect. So we have Roman numerals everywhere on the dial except the three nine and 12 o'clock and the numerals are black painted with green outlines and raised above the dial so it gives you a bit of a three-dimensional effect and one thing that people always comment about when they see a day chest with roman numerals is the four o'clock index so it's four sticks yeah and in roman numerals you write it like what? You write it IV. IV, it's, exactly. But that's called the watchmaker's... Yes. The watchmaker 4, So basically. it's uh, for symmetry reasons. Yeah, it's for design purposes. And uh, also another thing that um, I saw a lot of people getting annoyed over with this design uh, when I did some research is that the 9 o'clock, people seem to really be bothered that it is not an... Uh, Roman numerals mm -hmm. and from from a design cue I can understand Rolex trying to balance yeah, the date course, window yeah. with the nine o'clock being basically a stick loom so uh, props to Rolex to even you know go that extra length in their design thoughts I think it's actually great and it gives it the ultimate balance and the date just 41 I I just compared it to its predecessor and this one is, is such an upgrade. Yeah, 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 100%. I, I, I mean, it's the same for the day date two and the day exactly date exactly the date. same. They did the same re same revamp with the case, made it slimmer, made yeah. more balance and everything. So they took a huge leap forward in in developing the new models uh, compared to the day just two and the day date two. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, definitely. Uh, a leap in the right direction yeah this is the result when you basically hone your craft over so many years and yeah. um, that you, you you start paying attention to these small lit little details and um, yeah yeah but I believe that's one of the key factors to this model's popularity it's that it's versatile I mean yeah it's both sporty and dressy at the same time yeah and uh, the case dimensions and I mean overall slimness of the case super comfortable to wear yeah and i mean you have five thousand different options exactly in different materials different dials etc so and up until now for most of the models it has been accessible yeah and uh, priced pretty reasonably uh, within the market if you compare it to other sports models within the rolex catalog yeah absolutely and uh, you're touching uh, on the price uh, segment there, yeah. and so when you when you look at the pricing of the two tone Rolex Datejust Forty One, the pricing is a little bit all over the place depending if you're looking in the European market or if you're looking outside of the European market. As you might know, in Europe we have something called VAT, which is a taxation of about 20-25 percent depending on which country. So in Europe, this watch is actually significantly higher in price than it is um, elsewhere in the world and um, I saw this on uh, in the US market trading for around this exact model so to say trading around 12 and a, uh, 12 and a half to 13 and a half 
while in the European market it is slightly higher and it's trading around 14 and a half almost up to 15 and a half and the official retail price if you convert it to US dollars in Europe it's close to 16,000 and that is a little bit uh, thanks to how the dollar is standing towards the euro and the rest of the currencies in Europe. But still, nevertheless, at $12,000, $13,000, I think this is a pretty good option if you like a two-tone and if you want to get your hands on a Wimbledon dial as well. All right, guys, that's it for this time. Let us know in the comments if you're a fan of the Wimbledon dials or if you're not. And... Uh, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and see you next time. Thank you.